Devante was 16 years old. He'd been in and out of juvenile detention since he was 13. He'd always been sensitive to disrespect, had a temper, used a lot of profanity, but could usually keep his cool while he was locked up. He liked to goof around on the unit and goof around at school, and he got along pretty well with the staff and his peers. But something was different when he came back to the facility in October. He was quieter than normal. He kept to himself. It seemed like everything got on his nerves, everything bugged him. And it seemed when peers would try to engage with him, he would respond with cruel and cutting remarks. Devante was resistant to staff instruction. Even basic requests seemed to be a challenge for him. Devante refused to get up for school in the morning. He wanted to sleep all day. But when staff would force him to get up and send him to school, he would threaten the teacher and get sent back to the unit where he would end up sleeping all day. Staff overheard Devante on the phone talking to his mom, saying that his young son would be better off without him. That night, when there was only one staff on the unit, Devante took the sheet from his room, tied it into a noose, climbed up on his sink, and tied it to the light box in the ceiling. Suicide is the leading cause of death of, among youth in juvenile justice facilities. And if that isn't tragic enough, most of these suicides are preventable. Today, I wanna to talk about why youth in custody are at such a high rate for suicide, what we've done to try to stop these tragic deaths, and some of the ways I believe that we can do it better. So over the past decade, there's been a big reduction in the number of youth that are in our juvenile justice facilities. However, when we think about who remains in our juvenile detention and juvenile correctional facilities, they are some of the most violent and mentally ill youth in our country. They are also the most at risk for killing themselves. One study in juvenile detention found that one in 10 youth had thought about killing themselves in the last six months. A little over one in 10 had actually made a suicide attempt at some point in their lives with many of them making more than one attempt. Less than half of those who had been thinking about suicide ever told anyone about it. These rates are likely even higher for youth who are deeper in the juvenile justice system, those youth who are in our longer term juvenile correctional facilities. When you think about the risk factors for suicide among teenagers, some of the biggest ones are having a mental health disorder, such as depression or bipolar disorder, or using alcohol or other drugs. Anger, aggression, violence, conflict or a lack of connection with your family or other important individuals in your life, or sporadic school attendance or just completely dropping out of school. Physical abuse, sexual abuse, childhood neglect, and legal or discipline problems. If you visit any juvenile justice facility around the country, you will find kids with three, four, five, or more of the suicide risk factors that I've just mentioned. Being detained or incarcerated can be stressful for any young person, but it is even more so for those who are mentally ill. Studies have found 63 to 92% of youth in custody have a diagnosable mental health or substance abuse disorder. And when you think about the typical coping skills that these youth use, it's usually cigarettes, alcohol, other drugs, running away, having sex, getting into fights, engaging in criminal activity. Understandably, these are forbidden while they are in custody. So our juvenile justice facilities are filled with young people who possess a multitude of suicide risk factors. They're currently in a stressful circumstance or environment, and then they have restricted access to their typical coping skills. And then something happens. Sometimes it's huge, sometimes it's not. But for some youth, confinement, life becomes too much to bear. Now, most suicidal teens don't literally want to be dead. They usually want to escape. So sometimes it's unbearable emotional or psychological pain. Sometimes they want to escape an unbearable situation or circumstance. And sometimes it's an unbearable future or lack thereof. Some confined youth just become so angry, hopeless, or frustrated, they literally just can't take it anymore. One study found that among youth in custody, those who were bullied were nine times more likely to kill themselves. So suicide attempts in facilities may be planned for days or even weeks, but oftentimes they can be impulsive acts that literally happen within an instant.